In this Tirana's video, what we're going to do is actually install an external module into the radio. Now I've actually managed to get my hands on one of the real Spectrum external modules. Those of you that have been subscribers of mine for some time know that I have a lot of Spectrum equipment. So being able to start to connect to it with this radio and still use all of the great features and programming is a fantastic idea. Now I've been waiting for Hobby King to get the orange JR module in stock for ages and I've finally given up. So I've got one of these which is the uh, DM9 Spectrum module. Now this is going to go into the back of the radio, we're going to set it up in this video. Well then once we've physically installed it in the radio we'll then go and set it up in the menu and then finally I'll connect and bind to a Spectrum receiver so we can see it actually working in practice. So the module that you use is actually selectable uh, model by model. So you can decide whether or not you want to talk the whatever the module is that you've got plugged into the back of the radio, or you want to use the ACCST protocol that the FR Sky stuff uses by default. So to install it is pretty straightforward. All you do is you turn the radio over, you pull on those two tabs, and you have access to the back. The actual connections are done by these five pins just inside the back, and there are five corresponding holes in the module itself. Now you have to be very gentle when you're installing the module, because you have to align it on top of the pins, and then press it home. If there is any resistance at all, don't push it because these pins are pretty long as you can see and they're quite stiff but if you bend them you'll be in big trouble. So make sure that the module is seated properly before pushing it home. So let me just do that off camera because I want to be very careful with this make sure I don't damage anything and then we'll come back and have a look. Okay, so with a little bit of gentle persuasion, we now have the module fit in. And as I said, you'll know when it's ready because it'll just slide home beautifully. If you're having to force it or you're moving it around, you can hear the twanging of the pins, then just be a little bit careful. For me, the trick was actually uh, bringing the module in from uh, this side and actually capturing the pins and then it just slid beautifully home. Now, obviously it looks a little bit um, unusual because it now has two aerials out the back. We have one for the Trina system and we have one for the Spectrum system. And we can decide which one we want to use. And what we're going to use for the demo is we'll bind it up to this little AR6100 Spectrum receiver. Uh, it could be any DSM compatible, one of the Lemon or the Orange receivers work just as well. And we've plugged a little um, connector into the battery port which will put it into bind mode. Well, let me show you what we need to do on the radio to enable the module for the Spectrum. What we're going to have to do is first of all we'll turn on the radio. And what we do is we go into uh, the menu and then jump into the settings for the model. And right at the bottom of the very second page, and it's easy if we just press plus, that'll take us up through the bottom. You can actually see here that we now have the external radio receiver is now set to PPM, which is what it has to be for these modules. Then it's going to output channels 1 to 8, and it's going to set the PPM frame, 300 microseconds. And this is something that changes from plus to minus. Now this is an interesting one. I would say that this works great. This proper spectrum module works fine if it's a minus. I've seen videos where if it's the orange RX GR receiver, it can be plus. This is where I would say if it's not binding up, just double check it. And obviously then I've actually turned off the internal Tyrannus radio frequency module. So you turn that one off and you go down here and you turn this on for PPM. And then once you've got it set up for those other things, then you're good. Now to bind it is pretty straightforward. We're going to turn the radio off. So what we have here is our A6100. We have a little servo plugged into what is called the throttle channel on the receiver. And I have my little bind plug plugged into it as well. So if I just apply a bit of power, you'll see that the receiver is flashing away, ready in bind mode. And then what you need to do with the radio is you need to, just like you would with a Spectrum radio, there's a little button on the back and you need to press and hold that while turning on the radio. You need to make sure it's pressed and ready and then power the radio on. Once it's powered on and you can see the amber light flashing at the back, 
let go. And then it'll bind up. So there we have a bind. So now if I move the control, we're actually controlling a spectrum receiver. One of the things you'll notice though is the throttle channel is the one that I've plugged the servo into, but it's actually the aileron channel that is being output. So if I just jump into the menu for this model and we go into the outputs, you can see that's why. So what I would say is, look, just be a little bit careful when you're binding up new models using an external module, just go through and just double check with a spare receiver what the order of the channels needs to be and make sure that those channels are reflected in here. So for example, if you're plugging into the throttle channel, make sure the throttle channel is the first one, then it's aileron, elevator and rudder for something like a spectrum system. But just be aware of that. If you have moved things around or you're using them in a slightly different way, then make sure that they match the outputs on the receiver before you go plugging in your model. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are looking to use an external module. Again, very straightforward. Just plug the thing into the back. Make sure that you're not fighting the pins. Once it's in there, then you have to go into the model menu and set up the external RF module to be on. The internal one needs to be off. Make sure that it's set for PPM, the output number of channels that you want and then make sure to set the defaults for the millisecond and microsecond ranges. But that bit at the end, the plus and minus, will make all the difference. That is the bit that it will either work or not work. So if you try it with your external one and it doesn't bind, just change that plus to minus or minus to plus and you should be good. So now I just have to modify my case to carry this around in because I now have an extra uh, transmitter and uh, I can start binding up some of my older models that have these style receivers in them and the orange receivers and start to fly those older craft on this radio without having to change anything else. Just double check that the order of the channels is absolutely as you need it so that you're not outputting something like the elevator onto the throttle channel and vice versa because that will catch you out. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.